Okay, girls, I'm going to show you how to use Sibelius to get yourself up and running for your composition. So the first thing you need to do is launch Sibelius and you can either look for the icon on the dock or what's easier is to go up to the magnifying glass and type in Sibelius and launch it. In this case, I'm going to create a new file. And at the moment, depending on who has used Sibelius last, you'll see some different settings. But you can see over here that it says blank. Um, and what I need to do is add some instruments. Now for this example, I want to choose a guitar. So I'm going to click on change instruments. But there are a whole stack of templates. So let's say you want to write for a choir. You can click on choir and it automatically works out the instruments for you. But I'm going to have mine as blank. And I'm going to add a guitar to it. So over here, there are a whole stack of instruments. A guitar is a stringed instrument. Um, so let's search around until I can find the guitar. Oh, there it is over there. There's a bass guitar. Here we go. Let's do an electric guitar. And I'm going to click on notation. Now what I need to do is that I need to tell Sibelius what staffs or staves go into here. So I need to make sure that one is selected and then go add to score and put it in there so that Sibelius knows that you've got an instrument in there. And then we'll go OK. Then I'm ready to click next. Um, you don't need to worry about changing the font styles. So I'll click next again. In this case, it's going to be a 4-4 time signature. And in this case, it's going to be C major. Um, my title is going to be Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Right, you can put the composer in and all that kind of stuff. But now I'm ready to click finish. And when I do that, Sibelius launches Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, uh, a blank template with nothing on it. So the way Sibelius works is that you need to put notes into it for it to work. Um, in order to do that, you'll need to make sure that the keypad is activated. So this pattern here, this little button here, activates the keypad. And it's in the shape of the numbers on the side of a keyboard, not on a laptop keyboard, but on a, on a full-size keyboard. Because what you can do is actually press the numbers to represent different notes. So one way for me to enter notes in is that let's Twinkle Twinkle Little Start starts with the notes C, C, G, G. So I'm going to click on crotchets and I'm going to simply choose the notes. You can kind of see that Sibelius guides you along. Right, and you can kind of go up and down. And what it does as well is that if I put it at the beginning of the bar, it's going to assume that you want to crotch it on beat number one. But if I drag it, it's going to assume beat number two, beat number three, beat number four. It kind of forces you to want to put the notes in the right place. So on, I'm going to go C, C, G, G. So there's the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The first way to put notes in is that you simply click the notes in like I've just done. You can use the different values and rest values and so on. If I want to hear what's just being played, right, what I need to do is click on the play icon, which is up the top here, the playback icon. And when I bring that up, it actually launches the playback toolbar. I'm going to rewind it and press play. And now I'll be able to hear what my song sounds like. Right, so the next thing to remember about how Sibelius works is that whatever is blue is actually selected and will cause a change um, if you do something to it. So at the moment, there is nothing that is blue, but have a look at what happens if I press the note G, you'll see that the color turns blue. This lets me do things to that note. First thing I can do is I can use the arrow keys to make it go up higher or down. Right. Notice how the, the note has turned red. That's because Sibelius has worked out that for the guitar, it can't play that note because it's too low, so it's gone red. And I can keep going up and work out that the lowest note I can play is that one there, which happens to be an E. But the note that I actually need is the G, so let me bring it up. There we go. Um, now, the next way to put notes in, apart from clicking uh, and dragging them in, is that you can use the letters on the keyboard to put the notes in. 
So my next group of notes go like this. C, C, G, G, A, A, G as a minimum. All right, so I'm going to click on a crotchet. Oh, sorry. Let me click on the bar so that it's selected. Click on a crotchet. And this time, I'm going to click on that first rest. And instead of dragging the notes in, I'm just going to press the letter of the note that I need on the keyboard. So I'm going to press A. So pressing the letter A actually types them in. My next note is a G and it needs to be a minimum. So I'm going to select minimum and type the note or the, the letter on the keyboard G. And it comes up with that. So you can also type notes in. So have a listen now. Now, a third way to get notes in, let's say that you're a piano player, you can actually bring up a little piano by clicking on window and typing on keyboard. And it brings up a little piano. All right, and what you can do is that in, if you're not too sure where the note belongs here, oop, that's a bit too high, let's bring it down. Oops, it's actually typing the notes in, so let me undo all of that. Here we go, and let's bring it down an octave. Here we go. My next notes go C, C, G, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. So I'm going to type those notes in, but instead of dragging them in or using my keyboard, I'm going to use the piano. I'm going to start by pressing a crotchet, and then I'm going to go F, F, E, E, D, D, and then I need a minimum for C. And it automatically puts them in for you. So let's have a listen to the song now. It even shows you on the keyboard here. So let's say that you're a guitarist um, and you're not too familiar with the keyboard. Then the other way that you can put notes in is that you bring up the guitar fretboard over here. So let me click on that. And here you've got a guitar fretboard and you can put the notes in by actually typing them into the fretboard. So my next group of notes do the same thing. F, F, E, E, D, D, C. So I'm going to click on the bar. Click on my crotchet because that's the first thing I need. And I'm going to click on the note F on the guitar which is here. Oh, sorry. I meant to have a G. So let me use the arrow for G which is there. G, G. Oops. Next note. And then F. Whoops. Oh, let's unclick that. That's better. Notice that it automatically added in a bar for me. Okay. And that one needs to be a minimum, so let's adjust it. So these are the various different ways to put notes into Sibelius. A couple of tips. First one is when you run out of bars, either go to the end and keep typing and it will automatically put them in. Or say create bar at the end and it will automatically add in an extra bar like it has there and finally Sibelius is, has two different views the first view is a page view so this is like when you're actually going to print it but what's a little bit easier to work with is this view here which is called panoramic view and what panoramic view it does it's like having it's like writing a sentence in English where instead of getting to the end of the page and going to the next line you just keep going across so if I click on that, you'll notice that my music just goes all the way across and I can keep adding bars and it just keeps going all the way across until you run out of music. Are there any questions, girls? Okay, nope. good. Yes. Is your voice recording over that? Yes. Hello. <laughs>